Ants are found on every continent except Antarctica. Ants are fascinating social insects that are very enjoyable to watch. There are thousands of species worldwide with a great variety in their size, physical characteristics and behaviours. Do you want to keep ants as pets? Well, ant keeping is an amazing and interesting hobby to get into and I highly recommend it. But if you want to keep them as pets, you will need one thing. To start in ant keeping, you will need a queen ant. Without a queen, the colony cannot survive. Catching workers from the wild will just die out after a while, so you will need a queen ant. You can purchase a queen ant from the various sellers, but in this video, I'm going to give you some tips on finding a queen yourself. So, let's get in to the video. This video is sponsored by Ant Keeping Depot. Click on the link in the description to check out their website. A queen ant is needed to have a successful colony that will grow and expand. New eggs will be laid, workers will emerge, and the nest and colony will expand. So you will need to find a queen ant to grow a colony. Depending on where you are in the world, finding queen ants will vary. Different species release queens at different times. And it's not possible for me to cover all species and all countries, but I'll give you some ideas that should help you no matter where you are in the world. To begin with, we need to understand the process of queens flying and leaving the nest. An ant colony, in general, is started by a fertile queen. She finds a suitable place to found or start her colony. When the colony has grown to a certain size, and this greatly depends on the species and the environmental conditions, that colony will start to produce queen and male eggs. These will be raised in the colony and the colony will wait for the perfect time to release these virgin alates. And now that's a term for a new queen or a male or a drone. When these new queens and males leave the nest, it's called a nuptial flight. Dozens and even hundreds of queens and drones can leave a nest during a nuptial flight. These males and queens from the same nest cannot mate, so they need to find another colony to mate with. The colonies time their nuptial flights so that there are going to be suitable mates around, flying around in the environment so that they can meet up with them and mate. It's important that you don't collect queens right from the colony that has just released them, as they won't have mated and they won't be fertile. If you notice a nuptial flight happening, then move away from it and search around. Quite often you will find queens that are mating with males, or queens that are scurrying around looking for a hiding place. These generally will be mated. Mated queens will drop their wings once they are mated, but not always, so just remember that as well. Some queens will keep their wings. The wings only serve the purpose to get a queen to a male of another colony. The males or drones will die shortly after mating. A male drone will appear more wasp-like. It will have a tiny head and long antennae. The gaster or the abdomen will be very small as well. Now before we get into more details about queens and identifying and collecting them, we need to look at the timing for these nuptial flights. Firstly, let's look at the time of year depending on where you may be located. Most nuptial flights start around spring. However, depending on where you are, there can be a nuptial flight all year round of different species. In Australia, that means around September, the start of spring. In the Northern Hemisphere, areas like Europe and the United States of America, it can be around June. Some species start in September and fly later in, into spring or even into summer, so it can last many months. As an example, in Australia, Retida panera, or green-headed ants, 
start flying at the beginning of September. For your area, you will be able to find sources for the species that fly and when they do. Please join the Discord server in the link below in the description and Ankeepers from around the world will be able to help you there. There are many places that you can find out about nuptial flights. So search it on the internet, join a Facebook group and things like that. There are many resources out there where you can find what will be flying in your area. Unfortunately, it's not possible for me to list each country or location and the species that fly. The video would be hours long. But let's now look at the tips, no matter where you are in the world, which will enable you to find a queen. Let's look at the days to search. Now ants will only fly on Saturday because they know that we will have time to collect them. Just kidding, it can be any day, it doesn't matter. They do not care what you're doing. The best time to go hunting for ants and queens is after it has rained and it's very sunny. So if it's raining one day, go on the next sunny day. And there are a few reasons for doing this. After rain, the ground is softer for new queens to dig. The humidity levels are also much higher in the air. Winds are generally not as high the next day after the rain, which makes flying easier for those queens. Some species rely on the wind though to help them to fly away from their nest and to find a suitable mate. But generally, really windy days are not the best for finding queens. Now time of day is the next thing. Some species fly early in the day. Others around midday to early afternoon and then others will fly at night. Again, this depends on the species and it's something you can ask local ant keepers about. A couple of examples are locally here in Australia. Retida panera metallica fly around midday to early afternoon. Campanotus usually fly late afternoon and into the night. Okay, so now you know when to go out and look for queens. How do you actually do it? Firstly, you'll need to make sure you have a few suitable containers. Now these don't have to be test tubes or field tubes but they are great if you do have them. You can use any small container. What I find best is to head out on a sunny day after rain and then walk around on the pathways. This serves as the purpose of the queen standing out and being noticed as they scurry along the pavement. Just walk around and see what crawls across your path. You may be surprised. Before nuptial season starts, you can walk around the area and get an idea of what species of ants are in your particular area. Then you'll know exactly when to go out and look for them. Now a queen ant can be very erratic as they're scurrying around and looking for a suitable place to hide and start their new colony. Now as mentioned before a queen may still have her wings and this doesn't mean that she hasn't mated she may just not have removed her wings yet. Some queens will allow you to collect them easily in a container and others will prove very difficult. I try to guide the queen with one hand toward the test tube or the container. But be patient. Don't stress too much. You don't want to rush and squash a queen or injure her. Once you have her in the container, Place her somewhere nice and dark so she can relax. Now I just had to leave this bit in. I took my daughter and we went ant catching and this was just really funny so I thought I'd leave it in for Crazy you. Ant. Enjoy. Moving so fast. <laughs> <laughs> the best ant keeper in the world. You want him on your side. Congratulations, you have a queen ant and now you are ready to start ant keeping. Identifying the queen would be the next thing to do and this will tell you how to look after her. I will put a video at the end of this one which tells you exactly what to do once you have caught a queen. The next few steps are very important so please make sure you watch that video next. 
Well, I hope this video was helpful in giving you some tips on catching a queen ant for your own colony. You will find so much enjoyment from keeping ants as pets. They are amazing and the ant keeping community is very supportive. Before I put up the video of what to do next once you've caught a queen ant, a quick word about our wonderful Patreons who support this channel and make content like this possible. So a huge thanks to my Patreons. Thank you, Medical Carcass 9, Ants 3D, John Redwood, and Kay Single. I really appreciate it. For as little as $1 a month, you can support the channel and you'll get early access to videos, behind the scenes information, and plenty of other perks on different levels as well. So I really appreciate your support. Thank you very much. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. That'd be fantastic and it's great support. You'll find a video there recommended for yourself and then one there I've picked for you. Now that's how to look after a queen once you've caught her. Enjoy that video and remember, happy ant keeping.